G'day folks, Troy Dean here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make your very first website with just a few clicks of your mouse without having to become a programmer or learning how to write any code. If you've ever thought about starting a business as a web designer, but you weren't sure if you had the skills or if you could actually do it, then this video is perfect for you because I'm gonna show you how easy it is to start building websites for clients using WordPress and what we call starter sites. I've also put a link below this video to our free proposal template. Sending proposals to clients to get them to agree to pay you to build a website is an important part of the process if you have your own business. And this proposal template is used by thousands of our customers all over the world and brings in collectively somewhere between 50 and $100 million a year in consulting fees for all of our customers between them. So we know it works. Uh, we've been using it and testing it for over 10 years now, and as I said, thousands of our customers use it all over the world. So the link to that will be below this video. But right now, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make your first website using WordPress and some starter sites. So let's dive in. Okay, so you might remember from the previous videos, we now have an account set up with DreamHost and we have a domain name registered and hosted with DreamHost. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to make your first website for a client without touching any code in just a few mouse clicks. So from my DreamHost dashboard, I come on over to Domains and I go to Manage Domains. And you'll remember from the previous video, I registered thegeekymonkey.com, which is the domain name I'm going to use to make all these videos for you guys. So what I wanna do here is come down to Websites and then next to thegeekymonkey.com, I wanna click on Manage. And here, it gives me an option to install WordPress Content Management System, which is exactly what I wanna do. Install WordPress, I don't wanna tick either of these options, I just wanna install WordPress as it is out of the box. This is gonna take a few minutes, but it's going to install WordPress on thegeekymonkey.com. And once it's installed, I'll be able to log into WordPress and start making my first website with just a few clicks. Okay, this big green notification at the top tells me that WordPress has been successfully installed on your website, which is awesome. All I need to do is click on the WordPress button and I'll be automatically logged in to my WordPress dashboard and I can start making changes. Okay, now I'm logged into my admin dashboard for WordPress. Here's what I wanna do in order. I wanna come over to Appearance and go to Themes. And then I want to Add New. I'll make a whole other video on the difference between a theme and a template, but essentially a theme is a collection of templates that makes your website look a certain way. And what I wanna do is from my WordPress theme shop here, I wanna search for Astra, and I wanna install this first one here. It's just called Astra, click on install, and then once it's installed, I wanna click on the activate button, which just takes a few seconds. And once it activates Astra, I'll be asked uh, if I want to install the starter templates plugin. And I do because Astra comes with dozens of ready to use starter templates that I can use to start building a website within a few minutes. So I'm going to click on get started to install the Astra starter templates plugin. Once that's activated, I'm then presented with a wizard that asks me which page builder I want to use to start making my website. Now I don't want to confuse you with too many details right now. I'll make a whole other video about this another time, but just know that the easiest way to get started is to use Elementor. So just click on the Elementor icon, and then you'll be shown a whole bunch of websites that you can literally import with a couple of clicks into your domain name and start working on. What I wanna do is make sure that I'm only looking at the free options, because I don't wanna spend any money unnecessarily just yet. And you can see all the different types of websites here that are for the Elementor plugin and are completely free. So there is a website here for an online course directory or academy. There's a website for a life coach. There's a website for a, a mountain company. Maybe it's, maybe it's mountaineering or a clothing store. There's an outdoor adventure company. There's an organic store. There's a musician. There's a website here for an ebook author personal trainers, nutritionists, dental clinics, accountant. I'm going to install the website for 
a digital agency. This one here, Coach, I really like as well. But I'm going to install this one here for digital agency because I want to start promoting myself as a digital agency. So I'm going to click on digital agency. It shows me the different page templates that come with this theme. I can scroll along here and have a look at each page template. So that's the home page. There's an about page, which looks pretty good. Looks fantastic, actually. Here's a contact page, of course, the all important contact page so that people can get in touch and request a proposal. I can view this in the browser and actually see how it works if I want to, or I can just import the complete site. So I'm going to import this complete site into my domain name. Um, I'm not going to change any settings there. Uh, importantly, I'm going to import the content so that I know what the website looks like full of content. And I'm going to click on the import button and it's just going to take a few moments to import the website and activate the plugins that I need to run this website. Again, I'll make a whole other video on what plugins are, but they basically extend the functionality of WordPress. This is automatically installing the WP Forms plugin for my contact form, and it's automatically installing Elementor, which is a free page building plugin, and it's automatically installing a Elementor headers and footers uh, plugin which gives me control over the site header and site footer. They're all free plugins by the way. This hasn't cost me a cent and I haven't touched any code. My website is now imported successfully and I'm going to click on view site. And voila, here is my website fully imported without touching any code. Obviously I want to start making some changes which I'll show you in a moment. But here is a website for a digital agency. It, it absolutely works. I can click on the About page and in the menu and it will take me to the About page. Uh, I can click on my little, what's called my little accordion here for my questions and answers and that's fully functional. I can click on here. Not sure where that'll take me. That doesn't take me anywhere at the moment. I could program, I could just program that link to automatically make a phone call. I can access the pages down here in the menu, click on services, takes me to my services page and click on my contact page and here's a contact form that people can fill out to get in touch and Google Maps shows us where the office is. Now I wanna make some changes. So let's go to the home page and just change a couple of things. I just wanna show you how quickly you can start making changes without touching any code. One first thing I want to change is the logo, obviously, because I'm not called Digital Agency. I'm called Geeky Monkey. I also want to change this headline. And then I'm also going to change the address on the contact form. And I also might want to put uh, my photo in here. I'm just going to do this as an example. And I'm also going to show you how to change the logo in the footer. So when I'm on any page in my website, because I'm using the Elementor plugin, I can come up here and I can click on Edit with Elementor. And this drop down here, shows me a couple of other things I can edit. If I just click edit with Elementor, I'm going to edit this page that I'm looking at right now. If I click on footer, I'm going to edit this section here, which is my footer. Now, a footer typically is built once and then gets applied across the whole site. So whenever you make a change to the footer, for example, if I change the address or change this logo, it will get applied across the entire site. Same with the header. If I change anything in the header here, it'll get applied across the, ho the whole site. That's why it's a separate item here in this menu. But right now I just want to edit this page. So I'm going to click on edit with Elementor and it's going to kick open the Elementor page builder. Don't be overwhelmed by this. Basically there are a whole bunch of elements on the left hand side here that I can drag and drop onto the page. Or if I want to edit anything on the page, I simply click it and the properties for that element come up here kind of like a properties inspector if you're used to using Photoshop or, or any other app on the computer where you click on something on the screen and this tells you what's happening there, you can edit it here or you can just edit the text directly here on the page. So I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to write a new headline, turn your website into a valuable business Asset. That's my headline. I actually don't want this little headline here at all, so I'm going to click there. Uh, Elementor tells me that I can use right click, and I say got it. So what I can do is I can right click there, and I can this menu pops down here. It's called a contextual menu, and I can just delete that 
right there. Same here, I don't want this little paragraph here, so I'm gonna right click and delete. Perfect, and this, I don't want it to say get started, I want it to say get in touch. So I'm gonna click that, I can just double click to highlight the text and say get in touch. Now, I do want that to be a little bit bolder, I want that font to be a little bit thicker so it's easier to read. So I'm going to click on the button, come over here to my style section of my inspector and under typography, I'm just going to click the little pencil to edit and I'm going to transform, sorry, I'm going to change the style here and make it, oh no, I'm going to change the weight, there we go, and make it bold. And that just bolds that text up a little bit, makes it a bit easier to read. Cool. Now I can't change the header, remember, because the header applies across the whole site. So I need to go somewhere else and change that and I'll show you that in a moment. What else do I want to change on this page? Well, obviously this is just placeholder text, so I need to start changing some of this. I'll just show you how easy it is to change this. If I click here, I can change the text here or I can just highlight the text directly on the page and type my new text in. And I'm going to say, we design world-class user experiences in the browser to convert more of your website visitors into leads and customers. There we go. Just change my spelling. All right, and now uh, I might also want to highlight, for example, user experiences. So I highlight that text and I can make it bold or italic or underline for a bit of emphasis on the right syllable, as they say. Okay, so you can you get the idea here. Uh, this here, by the way, is just called an image box. I know that because it tells me here that it's an image box, and that consists of an image, uh, a title, and a description. So I can just double-click that title, and I can make that UX if I want, and I can change this image. There are a bunch of images already in my media library from when I imported this site. Uh, courtesy of Astra, so I can use any of these images, or of course I can go to any of my image libraries online and choose whatever image I like. The only other change I would like to make here is I would like to make, uh, I'd like to add my image here. So I'm going to get rid of Fred, sorry Fred, and I'm going to choose my own image here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a file from my computer, and from my desktop, my geeky folder, I'm going to upload my cheesy headshot. It's going to upload it into the media library. So I've now got it in the media library and I can use this photo right across the website whenever I want to. I'm going to write my name as the alt text so search engines know who that is. And I'm going to insert media and there we go. Fred now looks like me and I'm going to change my name there. And I'm going to say director of conversions, which isn't even a thing, but I'm making it a thing. There you go. I'm really happy with this page now. I'm going to click on update. And those changes are made directly onto the website without touching any code. I haven't had to write any code yet. And I haven't spent any money except the $5 a month on the hosting. And I think it was $6 a year on the domain name or whatever. So if I come up here now to this little hamburger icon and click on view page, it will kick open the page in a new tab in my browser and here are my changes. Turn your website into a valuable business asset, get in touch, beautiful. And here's my change here, lovely. And there's my cheesy headshot right there. Okay, a couple of other things I would like to change. That logo right there and this logo here I wanna change. And then I also would like to change the address on the contact form. I'm gonna show you how to do that first because I can just do it right here in Elementor. I'm on the contact page. I just click on edit with Elementor and it's going to open the page in the Elementor page builder. What I'm going to do is click on the Google map widget here and just type in the address of our office. And in fact, if I just go to the suburb level Good old Google Maps kind of knows where I am. And there it is, 231 Chapel Street. That's exactly where we are. So I also want to update this. So I click on the pencil here. And you see here, this is a list of, uh, of items. I just click on each list item here to change 
the details. lovely, and so on and so forth, email, phone number, what have you, okay? You get the, you get the picture there. Uh, excellent. Click on update to save my changes. Too easy. I mean, this is literally just like using Word or a Google Doc. It's, it's a data entry job, right? <laughs> there's, there's no code required. Um, now, what I want to do is just show you how to change the header, if I just view this page in the browser, so I can see the page with some context, like the header and the footer, I want to show you how to change this header. And I also want to show you how to change the logo here in the footer. So first, first, let's deal with the footer, because that's easy, I just go edit with Elementor, and then click on footer. Now this is run by a plugin called Elementor header and footer. So I click on footer. And this allows me to change my header and footer using Elementor. So here is my footer. So this is across every page on the website, you will see this here, this is a call to action, and then my, my footer here, and I just want to change this logo. So look at that, I just click on the pencil. Okay, I can choose an image here, my default logo, and then a different logo here for retina devices. I'm just going to choose an image here. Again, I'm going to upload a file from my desktop, from my geeky folder, I'm going to upload my geeky monkey logo which I spent a long time and lots of money developing, about $3.50 and two and a half minutes. And I'm going to say that is Geeky Monkey logo, so that Google knows what it's all about, and just make my title text there, Geeky Monkey, and then insert media. Okay, now it's not showing up here because I'm on a retina device, so I'm going to choose the same image here, You'll notice that my alt text and my title is saved in the media library, which is excellent. And I'm going to insert for retina devices. And there it is, Geeky Monkey. Perfect. Click on update. And now the only other thing I want to do is change the logo in my header. And to do that, we need to duck into the WordPress dashboard and actually customize the header at, at the theme level, not doing it at a page level. So I go to dashboard. And under my appearance menu, I have this customize option, which allows me to start customizing the theme that I have installed, which in this case is Astra. And what I want to do under my theme customizer options is choose header. And under site identity, here is where I can choose my logo. Um, however, this is a transparent logo, which means the, the header here is transparent and you can see that the image beneath it. And it actually warns you here, the logo on this page is set from the transparent header section. So customize the transparent header. See what I'm about to do here is customize the main header, but there's a separate transparent header set up for when you want to use a transparent header. So I'm going to click on transparent header and here's the image digital agency. This is what I want to change. So I'm going to change that to the geeky monkey logo that I uploaded for default devices and for retina devices. There we go. Point and click, data entry, copy and paste, no code required. There we go. And I'm done. So I'm going to publish those changes. Now I could do a whole bunch of other stuff like change the colors, change the font, do all that kind of stuff if I could be bothered. I'll make a whole bunch of other videos to show you how to do that. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this example to bring my own website to life at thegeekymonkey.com and I'm going to get it up and about and um, use it as a test case to show you guys how easy it is to do this. And I'm doing this because I want you to overcome any fear that you might have that you don't have the skills to build websites for clients. If you know how to use a computer and the internet, you do. So I've just clicked on the publish button. Uh, I'm going to come back here now, click the X to come back to my dashboard. And I'm going to mouse over the name of my website here and then click on visit site. And you'll see the glorious geeky monkey in the browser there with the logo and all the changes that I've made without touching a line of code. So I hope you found this super helpful. One of the questions that you've probably got now is, now that I'm confident in the fact that I can build a website for a client and I can put their content in and I can make it look pretty good, I can make it look fantastic actually, how do I start winning those clients? One of the first things you're going to need is a great proposal so that you can put a value proposition in front of clients and convince them to pay you good money for your newfound skills. 
And just so happens that we have an amazing proposal template that you can have for free that will help you craft a great proposal and put that proposal in front of clients. Now, this proposal template that we're giving you is used by thousands of our customers all over the world, and it generates somewhere between $50 and $100 million a year in consulting fees between all of our clients collectively. So it works, uh, it's tried and tested, it's an absolute uh, fantastic proposal template. It will allow you to pr produce proposals extremely quickly, get them out the door and land projects now that you know that you can actually build a client site without touching any code. So the link near this video will give you access to that proposal template. Just click the link, sign up for the free proposal template and start writing proposals. And I look forward to seeing you in another video where I'm going to teach you a whole bunch of other stuff about building websites for clients using the wonders of WordPress and uh, all of the fantastic themes and plugins and software that we have available literally at our fingertips. It's a great time to be in a web design digital marketing business and we're here to help you as much as possible. So feel free to leave a comment feedback or any questions beneath this video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.